Year's Eve 2020. Are you wearing sweatpants this New Year's Eve? Not me. I have a great idea for a cute and comfy cocktail skirt. Easy to make. Show you what I'm doing. Coming up. Hey, Chanel here with another edition for your So Chanel fashion playlist, bringing you tips, tools, and techniques for your fashion evolutions. So if you're new here, join us and subscribe, and I'll bring you weekly doses of fashion sewing inspiration. Well, I have this favorite skirt that I made um, about three four years ago. I have since lost it. <laughs> I think I left it in a hotel room in Los Angeles at the actually Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. We stayed there and that's the last time I remember seeing it. So I think I must have hung it on the back door and left without it. But needless to say, it was my favorite skirt. It was an upcycle. It started from a, a skirt that had this really cute little city scene on it. So I called it the city skirt. And I it got I think I, when I bought it, I bought it at a, a consignment shop, so um, it never really did fit. But what I did was I cut the bottom off and then made a top part yoke um, to make a whole nother skirt. And then it had like a trim on it and I put it on there. So it became the city skirt. And then one of my students uh, used the top part of it and then used a black bottom on it to um, make another skirt. So that skirt really, when we upcycled it, like every piece got used so it was great so um here's a picture of it i just love this skirt it was so comfortable to wear and it went with everything and i um just had to i i just can't get it back because um, i don't have that city skirt thing so new year's eve coming up i thought i'm going to make a quick and easy skirt and this was this could be a really quick and easy one and especially if you use like a stretch top part because you don't have to use a zipper on the side you can actually it's just two seams and then the skirts two seams but this is what the I did a muslin of it just kind of a mock-up pattern for it so this is the yoke part and this is this the skirt part. It's real simple and you just cut it's literally just two pattern pieces and you cut two of each a front and a back same and the whole thing is the same front and back and if you do a woven fabric you need a a zipper probably invisible zipper but if you use a stretch um, it'll just go on so you don't have to do that that cuts out a whole step and um, also makes it comfortable for staying at home on New Year's Eve <laughs> so this is the pattern I just drafted and um, I put it in a PDF form so that I can share it with you I'll have a link to this because I'm queen of skirts and that's my job making patterns for skirts so this is the fabric <clears throat> I'm going to be using. There is these three. Why is there three? Because I want to put this fabric, which I have had in my stash for, I'm guessing, uh, 15 years. <laughs> and I've never made anything with it. It's There's only, I hope I have enough. I, don't, I think there's about a yard of here. It's not... It's not a whole lot. But then I also have this fabric, which I've had for quite a while. And this I'm going to do um, as the layer underneath the skirt. So I'm going to be cutting out um, two layers of skirts. So this really helps the flowers on here pop. So I thought that'd be cute. And then I just have to think of a trim. But this is, now I used the same fabric on my city skirt as I did this skirt. And it was like the back side of this fabric, this is pleather. It looks like suede and I mean this really this is a good pleather um, so comfortable and I've, I remember that I was going I washed it and everything it was wonderful because it's made out of polyurethane or something but this is the leather side here and it has a little bit of stretch so it doesn't look stretchy um, but it just is comfortable so um, I got the pattern to fit just perfectly on me and um, well, also I'm calling it the Betty because um, it's a great skirt to wear with boots. And I was thinking, what rhymes with boots? Betty, 
doesn't run. <laughs> so, uh, but I don't know. I just call it Betty Boots. Uh, did somebody sing that song, Betty Boots? Uh, so it's called the Betty, no matter what. So I am going to get started on making the skirt. I got to figure out the yardage on it so I can write that on there for you if you want to download this pattern and make it yourself in time for New Year's Eve. And uh, it's quick and easy. I'll take you through it quickly and hopefully you make one too. Okay, my fabric here is uh, 58 inches wide, so I only need literally just one width of this. And um, this is about 13 inches. And I, I'm gonna cut it in half. I also wanna make sure my naps are going the same just in case they change. So I always put like an arrow on my fabric. I always know which way it's going because I, sometimes I just get lost on that. Um, so if it's 40, if your fabric is 45 inches wide, you're going to need probably two thirds of a yard because um, I don't think this will fit in a 45. Depends on the size you get, actually. I'll have the yardage on there. So now I'm going to be cutting two of these. Just cut that one in half. And I got this exact here. And the grain lines can't tear it so I can't figure that out but I have it folded here and it's lining up really well here so I'm just going to be cutting and I have to pick I got my arrow going this way I'm gonna I don't think on the leather side there's any difference in the shine I always like to pick the nap where it looks the darkest so like on velvet something with a real thick pile I like to um, have it go in the direction of where it's darkest so I'm just going to pin this on don't need to cut do the full part and cut that one I have a notch here in case I need a zipper and I don't yay this will go fast and easy Although my hem, I think I'm going to be doing some nice looking hem. i cut that one up. So that's going to take me a little bit of time on there, but probably going to be so worth it. Okay, there's one. That was quick. And then I'll do the second one. And make sure my arrows are going the right way. And then I'll cut out the skirt. Okay, now on to the skirt part. I have my chiffon ready. I have it, I tore this side on the cross grain so that it's really even. even. And then I anchor it to, I like these cardboard uh, cutting boards because you can just anchor the pins in that way. And my selvages, both are matched up evenly this way. So I know all my grains are matched up here because it's tricky to cut chiffon it slips around so much so I'm actually going to use some weights here and I'll probably do some pinning and when I pin I just I don't put my hands underneath the fabric and I just very carefully pin it all the way around there <laughs> and I have this other side here prepped also just so I'm going to cut that and then move it uh, that way and have my big shears out and just very carefully actually even have more weight sometimes the weights get in the way too and I'm just gonna cut it here I'd love to cut this with pinking shears but they're too hard to because this fabric's gonna shred like crazy I should um, do some actually I think that's what I'll do on this side is do a uh, not the flat felt seams, but the, what do we call it? I forgot. <laughs> the covered up seams. I'll come to it. When I, when I show you how to do it, I'll remember the name of it. It's not flat felt seam. It's, uh, oh my gosh, can't even think of the, the word. But real simple to do. And I got to take out these anchor pins when you go to cut around. Just get it cut as smooth as it can because it'll make it easier and sometimes you have to move the weights back. Ah, I'm a 
and make it taking little bites with little with big shears. <laughs> it takes a while. I've worked with a lot of chiffon, so it, it's kind of something you got to master for a while. But what do you do? Okay, there's my first one. Now I'm not even going to unpin that. I have this one all prepped, and then I'll just pick it up and make sure this all stays the same. It's moving around like crazy. So I'll put some weights on it. And I'll put this right here. And cut the next one out. All right, on to this one. So this layer here, I unfolded my bolt and I have a big cutout right here. <laughs> but I think this is what I'm gonna be using the bias on um, to for the chiffon um, hem. So I'm just gonna get it right there in the middle. Take this fabric, um, if this fabric is 45 inches wide, it looks like you need about a yard for each layer. Um, and even if it's 60 inches wide, I think you need about a yard. So that'll take, uh, if you had to do two layers, that'll take two, two yards. I might take up a little bit. I'm actually, and then this fabric too has a little bit of a damage right here. Something, it's not really damaged, but it's the metallic is damaged there. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut out the second layer. I also might, when I'm done cutting this, cut off another quarter of an inch of each layer so that I can just hem them all the same but yet have this a quarter inch smaller uh, so that the lining doesn't peek out from the top layer of the chiffon, like that. So no matter what, if I end up hemming at two inches, it'll still all be the same. And that would look like just me chopping off about a quarter of an inch right here. And that way I just treat them both the same You don't want your lining hanging out past your top layer. And I just eyeball a quarter of an inch, so just like that. Do that on both layers. Cut this out twice. Cut two on the fold. So there's that one layer, and then I do the next. Okay, got all my pieces cut out and got them pinned on the side seams. And I thought of the word it's a French seam because I thought it was just for some reason I had a brain block I'm like French seam why did why did the French get that seam I think they invented it <laughs> isn't it Italian seam I don't know so I looked it up in my trusty Vogue sewing book from the 70s this is how I learned how to sew I literally just went through all of these descriptions and um, I didn't have a sewing teacher um, I did have Miss Tucci, who, when I was 16 and 17, taught me a lot of stuff. But I remember looking through this Vogue sewing book a lot. So basically, French seam is really simple to do. Um, you, I was going to think of, you usually sew things right sides together. But in this case, you're going to sew it wrong sides together. And this fabric was kind of difficult to find what the wrong side was. They look both kind of good. But one rose is a little more vibrant than the other. So wrong sides together, and then you sew a quarter inch seam. These seam allowances, by the way, on this pattern is a, are a half an inch. So if you do a quarter inch seam, and I'm gonna press it, I'll probably trim it a little bit, then you press it, and then you basically turn it now, uh, so that was right side, now you turn it right sides together. You just flip it this way, and then you stitch it back down. So a quarter and a quarter is a half inch seam. And I'm going to trim it, that seam, a little bit so that the little edges of the chiffon don't get stuck in there. So I'm going to do that on, on um, both on the chiffon layer and on this layer here, because this fabric probably shreds too. So I got this set up too. I'm going to put wrong sides together, so a quarter of an inch. I'm going to trim that too. And I always press it and then press it again. So I press the seam towards one way and then fold it in half and press it. And then you get a nice flat felt seam. And I'm going to do a sew bit on French seams one day too. So I'm up to 50 
three sew bits. So there's a lot to sewing. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get those French seams in there. Also, I sewed the yoke together. This sewed really nicely together. I just used a size nine or size 11 needle. The chiffon, you might wanna use a, a nine needle, um, although I'd use the 11 because that's too lazy to change it, of course. So, <laughs> And it went through really well, it just went kind of slow. And it slips around a lot. You just have to let the feed dogs take it. You can also try a, a Teflon foot too. But I think when I turn this to sew on the pleather side, where'd it go? Then it's really the feet, oh my gosh, it's sticking together. This side, the presser feet really stick to this. So I'm gonna have to get my Teflon foot out. And um, I can actually press with this too. I'm not gonna press hard with the iron. I'm just gonna kind of steam it and let it cool with a, uh, put a pressing block on it and try to open that up as best I can. These don't open that great, um, but pretty simple so far. So I just did one side so I can show you. This was the quarter inch seam and I trimmed it and then you press it um, to one side and then press it in half and then you just sew a quarter inch here and it encloses the seam um, and actually Right here, this is a presser foot I use. It's just a, it's a zigzag foot, just regular looking foot. If my needle's in the middle and it goes over to a side, that's a quarter of an inch. So I just use that as the guide to sew on it and have the edge of it right on the edge of that zipper foot. So that is how that looks. It looks so great. Now this is the chiffon one. Remember, always wrong side together. That's the part that tricks people up. They think right sides together, but then you got to actually sew it wrong sides together. And then when you, by the time you flip it inside out, then it's right side. So here is the right side of the fabric, and here is the wrong side now. And it's all that seam is all enclosed in there, so you don't have the frayed edges. It doesn't work on curved edges very well. Um, it's kind of more when you're doing straight lines and stuff. And then when I go to hem this, if I if I don't bind it and I have to do a the small hem, it gets a little bumpy there, but um, it turns out it turns out pretty good. So if you got simple seams, it's good on. So here's the inside of the one that's not finished. Outside, this is um, right. Here's the I always get confused. Wrong side. I'm not gonna confuse you. <laughs> See, even confuses me. Then I'm gonna enclose it right here, and I'm just gonna stitch a quarter inch down, and then I get that really nice seam. So. Now, I gotta finish that up and then I gotta attach the skirt pieces together. I'm gonna, it's called flatting them together. Add that, just baste it all along there and then I attach the yoke. Pretty simple. Well, I got it flatted together. I got the skirt piece on. It looks really great. Got the yoke ready to go. Looks kind of big there, huh? <laughs> it's like, wow. And then I gotta, now I gotta attach the yoke to that. But then I also thought, what if I put a piece of binding or like a bias piece between the layers here where the skirt and that go through? So I love to do piping and flat piping, just like a piece of fabric. So I think I'm gonna cut a, um, just so it sticks out maybe a quarter to three eighths of an inch, a piece of bias and roll it, um, press it in half and then put it between the layers. And then while I'm at it, I'm gonna, um, I think I really wanna cut uh, or finish this off with a bias trim all along the hem so that it would look kind of like that, like that. So I think I'm just gonna need a one inch bias on for the hem part and probably have to do about two inches cause I'm gonna roll it over on here and then I'll just sandwich them in between there. Okay, I'm gonna cut out some bias. All right, got my trusty 45 degree angle. My selvage here. I'm just gonna try to get it out of scraps first so that I don't cut into the last piece of this fabric I have. And then I'll get the 45 degree. I actually have it ready to go here. And I'm gonna cut um, two inch strips like this for the bias. And I'll just fold it in half here and then the half inch seam allowance here, I'll just have like a little bit right there. And then I think I gotta do, so I gotta get a bunch of these. I have more fabric like this um, and the other scraps. And I have to just piece it together and 
get that all done. And then I'm going to do one inch strips that will look just a little bit smaller here for the bias hem. And I can put this all together. Okay, got my bias strips already. Here's my two inch one. Folded it, pressed it in half, and then I got a bunch of little connections in here. <laughs> I didn't have much fabric left, but that's going to be the one to go in between the yoke and the skirt. And then this is my hem for when I'm ready for it. I got to try the whole skirt on. I don't know where I'm going to cut it, but it's tiny and it's, um, I just don't want to stretch it out. That one's going to be hard to put on, but all right, I'm going to get this into my skirt. Hey, okay, got the bias all pressed and placed on the skirt. And I probably should baste this down. I have this already this basting stitch in here. It seems like it's sticking pretty good, so I might, I don't know. I probably should just baste it all down. <laughs> and I think how I'm gonna handle this is I folded this side under. I'm just gonna probably pop that in there. I hate cutting these too short because and I sew it around if it's not quite right, then I could be out. I could also figure out how to do the angle on here, but I think I'm just going to lay it like that. So to save me headache later, later I think I'm just going to go and baste this down before I sew the yoke on it. Okay, got that on there, and I basted it down. Makes everything a little easier. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't want to take the minute but then it makes the rest of this all easier. Now I got to attach this yoke to that. Figure out the easiest way. So I think the presser foot will slide the best on the suede side. So I'll start with the side seams and then get it all balanced out. And hopefully this all fits. It should. Yep. Kind of looks a little on the bigger side. Oh no. Kind of a little tighter. I'm gonna have to do a gentle ease stitch in here. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna have to take it in somehow. <laughs> Alright, I'll work on this. I'm going to sew a half an inch all the way around. I'll show you how it looks. Well, I got the skirt stitched together. Yay! I've actually been struggling here. Behind the scenes, trying to put this together. It sewed over and got the binding on really nicely. It just went right on. But then, the fabric, this bias wanted to flip up because the this uh, pleather was uh, it didn't it didn't want to flip up it wanted to stay down so that made this flip up so I don't know any other way to make it stay down except top stitch it um, which is what I did and that's where I struggled because my Teflon foot and even my roller foot just didn't want to glide on here I guess I probably should have YouTubed that problem <laughs> and um, figured out a way to fix that, but I wasn't sure. I do have a real fancy Bernina machine. I think what I might do now is um, do a little honeycomb stitch over that, which would be kind of a pucker on it. Not really a pucker, but it will help disguise all these little folds in here. It did turn out better once I pressed it, so that was good, um, but I'm just, I'm just not really happy with that. So. First, I'm gonna practice on a sample, see how it goes. I'm just gonna kind of put it together and get that same thickness and see what kind of stitch I can get on there and get that to lay better. So, I'm a little frustrated. <laughs> anyway, now, the next thing I have to do is put um, a waist facing or what? I actually, what I love to do with my skirts is use this 
elastic. It's the one inch fold over and it's not that cheap. There's is that cheap kind out there that you don't want to get. It's real thin, but this is, it just will just fold over the top of the skirt and I'll stretch it as I sew. What I do is I make it to fit me and then I half it and then quarter it and then pin it and then stretch as I sew and it just goes right over the edge of this and it comes out really great so comfortable for me so it's my body's now kind of rectangly and I don't need to put darts or anything like that it just needs to just grip a little bit so that's what I'm gonna do to this waist band so that is my next part I gotta do but I'm gonna do that tomorrow so well I'm back I've been thinking about this skirt all night long. <laughs> How do I fix the puckery seams? The stretched out seam I ruined it with. <laughs> Starters, I thought first, what if I just cut it off and use a different fabric that won't like stick to the all the presser feet? Um, and then I thought, okay, first I'll try my little honeycomb stitch trick well, it's not really a trick, but that stitch to see if it works. And if not, then I'm going to have to totally cut the skirt off and redo the bias because there will be no room left. Um, when I take it out, it's just gone. So anyway, so I came in and I, I practiced the honeycomb stitch right here on a piece of um, this pleather. When I sewed a straight stitch, the presser foot stuck to it, but then when I put it on this stitch it totally didn't stick i don't know what it is but i mean same presser foot but it just it's a stretch stitch so um because they have some kind of magic i don't this one honeycomb stitch just keeps saving me on a lot of projects i don't know um it's this one right here it's called knit overlock and i call it the honeycomb stitch so it's on a bernina i have and um i just seem to be that's what i use it for i use my really cheap brother machine for most other stuff but I got I gotta alert listen I gotta I gotta keep it out anyway so this is what it looks like Ta -da! I got it done it just looks so great so now you won't see all the puckery seams those little tiny puckers and it will look kind of like it's meant to be there I'm very happy with it yay so I fixed that problem Woohoo! and I got to use my Bernina machine so now I'm on to the knit or uh, to the elastic um, part right here on the waist so what I did was I put this around my waist um, cut it and then I stitched the seams together and I trimmed it out so I got the bulk out of here and then a little bit trim on here so that when you fold it over it's a uh, not so clumpy right there. I, think, I don't know why I have this pin here. And then I took, so I have two side seams on this skirt and um, I found the center front. That's where this, or actually this will, the center back will go. So that's where that will go. And then I found the center front. And that's where this will go. So then I'll be stitching in segments. I'll just be stitch here to here. I'll be stretching this as I go. And I'm going to use my honeycomb stitch on my Bernina as I'm going. So um, problem is once that's in, if I mess up, it's, uh, you can't really take it out. <laughs> that's why I never like to use stretch stitches, but most part, um, you know, kind of baste it first. Maybe I'll do that first, but then it won't really matter. Oh, well, if so, I can, I can always just cut it off because I have room on this one. So that's what I'm going to do. Here's one tip. If you use this elastic, don't press it, especially on this, I don't know, whatever side I used here. It just totally glued up, stuck to my iron, and I had to clean out, clean off my iron. I had some of that hot iron cleaner, and it works. It's amazing. Uh, so don't do that. But um, I'm going to go stitch this, and then I can get on to my hem and get this thing finished. Time for New Year's. All right. Got my elastic in. That honeycomb stitch on there looks great. Oh, it's coming together. Now I have to hem it. Look how much it's frayed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like, you just look at it, it frays. So now I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna cut off an inch and a half. Yeah, inch and a half. I'm kind of torn, torn between one and 
two inches. I want it to go right on the top of my kneecap. Um, and then I have this prepared, but now I look at this, it's so small. Wow. <laughs> just got to do a little tiny quarter inch seam allowance. I just want a little bit of it showing. So, oh man, I don't know. I hate these little things. They don't, I don't do so good with it. But, <laughs> um, all right, one and a half inch. I'm going to pink it so it doesn't fray like crazy. And then the underlining, I already cut off a quarter, but that hem's going to be a little bit bigger. So I have to figure it out. I think of these things, I figure it out as I go. Okay, I think I'm just going to hem it one inch because this board is one inch. <laughs> I think if I, what I did is I pinned the two layers together and then I can use this board because so I can see right through it and mark the one inch right through here. And all this fray part, so I had to match up where the fray was. So I'll do that and then cut with pinking shears very carefully so that the two layers don't move. It helps if the two layers are together, it helps the pinking shears cut a little easier with the more layer. Just like that so I'll be cutting that off then I have the pinking part and when I go to sew it it won't fray as much all right finish that part up okay I've stitched my first part on it was just a quarter inch seam allowance here and then I pressed it over and now I'm gonna just press it this way I'm actually not gonna tuck it double like this I'm just gonna press it over this way and then I'm gonna use that honeycomb stitch again and I practiced here, you can barely see it. It'll kind of help cover up that edge part here and get that kind of flat because I want it to lay really flat. So that's all I got to do. I'm going to start right where the joints come together and uh, hopefully it turns out really good. That's going to look pretty cool. If not, I could just cut it off and hem it regular. All right. The hem is done. It looks really great. I love that honeycomb stitch. So um, it's kind of like overlocks it, that raw edge on the back side because I didn't roll it underneath again so that I would have a nice flat edge but looks good. It's just going to keep all the threads intact there so they don't fray out so that'll be good and it's nice and flat. And now I have to line the or hem the lining and that I just chopped off a half an inch. I pinked it and now I'm going to use, um, then I rolled up another half. I always press my hems before I go stitch. That's the proper way to do it. Have a sew bit about that if you want. <laughs> um, and then I, I'm just going to, I pressed it. Now I'm just going to go and honeycomb stitch right there. So it's like overlocks that down. And um, then this skirt will be done. Well, I'm done. Yay. That's how the hem looks turned out really nice and then my under hem is just the little honeycomb stitch there I got it hopefully right I think right so you don't see the sheer under it I got it this lining right at the end of that that's what I always hope for so that you don't have like a little sheer part that you see through it I also added these rhinestones on the flower buds. I've only did it on three. I wanted to see how it looks, but I um, actually did it on four. And uh, I really like it. It adds a, you know, New Year's Eve needs a little extra sparkle, right? So what I did was I have my uh, rhinestone genie and I'm an affiliate to them. So I have a coupon um, down below in the descriptions and um, you get 10% off of there. And you just get the whole kit. It's like $30. and um, and then what you do is they give you all these templates in there. Actually, the basic, I think I bought some of this, but I think these are the basic ones. And it was this one here, and I made the rhinestones right here. I don't know if you can see them. Kind of sheer. And they're really easy. You just sweep the rhinestones into the template, and then you pick it up with the sticky tape, and then you iron it on to your garment right there. And then you have cute little rainstones. So there we go. My 
evening skirt is finished. Can you think of a simpler skirt than this? <laughs> well, there might be. Actually, I did have a little trouble with it, but um, it really didn't take me too long. I just did a little extra trims and stuff. That's what makes sewing your own fashion things more custom. So I always like to do little added touches to everything. That's the whole reason to sew. Anyway, so if you have any easy patterns that you know of, let me know in the comments below. And I have this pattern, uh, a link for it. It's called the Betty. And um, I'll put that below also, and you can go and find it. And um, I'll see you in the new year. <laughs>